This is the chant the world now knows, but this is the one that is growing. Defund! Defund! When I say defund, you say police! Defund! Defund! The new demand of the Black Lives Matter movement is to defund the police. Defunding the police is a campaign which identifies the fact that we've given the police more and more powers and resources, but we haven't seen any significant reduction in crime or any improvements in public safety. In fact, they often bring more violence to vulnerable and marginalised communities. For many, this is an extreme slogan, but to these protesters, it captures just what needs to change. So what does it mean? Where does it come from? And here in the UK, what exactly would be the impact of defunding the police? To understand the campaign to defund, you need to look at the US, the country with the highest incarceration rate in the world. Over the past four decades, America has almost tripled the amount it spends on policing, from $42 billion in 1977 to almost $115 billion 40 years later in 2017. Meanwhile, as police costs have skyrocketed, so has the number of people being incarcerated. And it's true, the amount of violent crime has fallen dramatically after reaching a peak in the early 90s. But some say that police budgets have just gone out of control. In New York, where Eric Garner was killed by police officers in 2014, the city spends $5.7 billion on policing every year. And that's out of the city's total budget of around $90 billion. That's more than the city spends on children's services, mental health, homeless services and sanitation. So now those calling for the police to be defunded say that money should be put into these areas instead to stop the causes of crime in the first place, rather than spending the money on an increasingly militarized force with state-of-the-art kits. We, we've fallen into the system where there's like, uh, we have one tool for fixing everything, the police, and so everything looks like a policeable solution but the, the alternatives to policing are actually very diverse. So really this, this requires a, a, a kind of new level of imagination, creativity, and evidence-based research to help us identify what these alternatives would look like concretely. We're getting tough on drugs and we mean business. Some argue that it was America's war on drugs that transformed the US into a penal society. Since 1980, the prison population has grown from around 300,000 to over 2.3 million today. Now, the incarceration rate has declined a bit in the last decade, but the numbers are still incredibly high. Out of every 100,000 people in America, 716 of them are behind bars, and one in five of these were for drug offenses. What's really telling about all of this is the racial makeup of the present population. White Americans account for 64% of America, but just 39% of prisoners. Meanwhile, African Americans make up 13% of the country overall, but they make up a staggering 40% of the present population. These problems, of course, go back centuries in the States. But what's new this time is social media. Videos of police killings can now go around the world in seconds, and as more people become enraged and engaged by these videos, many Americans are asking why they are paying billions of dollars in taxes to fund police forces who kill civilians and help to perpetuate age-old American inequalities and racial hierarchies. Defunding the police has now become the call of Black Lives Matter. It can be heard across America from Minneapolis to Miami, but the same message has also spread to the UK and now activists are calling to defund the police force here as well. But can the same argument really be made? After all, things like police shootings are not nearly as common right here in the UK. Policing here is made up of dozens of different forces, the largest being the Metropolitan Police in London, with a budget of about two and a half billion pounds. Across England and Wales, the total spend is about 14 billion pounds. Now, that's actually quite low when you compare it to the government's entire budget. Take the NHS, for example. That gets far more funding, around £153 billion every single year. But police numbers have become an increasingly political issue. In contrast to America, police officers have found themselves a casualty of austerity. With tighter budgets since the economic crash, this graph shows how the number of officers on the streets has gone down, not up. 
In fact, England and Wales have lost around 20,000 police officers in the last 10 years. During this time, many left-wing and liberal politicians have been saying this can't carry on and we need to increase the amount of police funding. Even Jeremy Corbyn, the most left-wing leader in the Labour Party's history, made this promise. We will recruit another 10,000 new police officers, including more armed police, who need to be properly rewarded, as well as a thousand more security service staff to support our communities and help keep us safe. His successor has taken a similar stance too. He joined the Black Lives Matter protest by taking the knee, but then appeared to distance himself from the campaign to defund the British police. So I asked him why that was. Sir Keir, is it time to defund the police? I do not think that the police in the UK should be defunded. I think they should be better funded. Uh, they should have more funding. I think at the same time, there should be more funding for uh, other areas. Mental health, education, housing um, would be obvious examples in my book. Perhaps the Labour Party is faced with a bit of a political dilemma here. The voter group most loyal to his party are black voters, and it's they who've had a hostile relationship with the police. But lots of other voters have traditionally always been in favour of having a stronger police force. So politicians like Sir Keir Starmer might find this issue a bit of a balancing act. Part of a disconnect between people's opinions on this is probably linked to their own personal experiences with the police. Reports say that in some parts of the country, black people are up to 40 times more likely to be stopped by the police than white people. In London, official stats show that not only are black people more likely to be stopped by the police, it's also more likely that these searches are completely unjustified, in the sense that the police don't actually find anything incriminating when they search you. And the problems don't even end there. For instance, black children in England and Wales make up 16% of child arrests, despite being less than 4% of the population. And they were more than four times more likely than white children to be arrested. And prisons too. Despite making up just 14% of the overall population, black and brown men and women make up a quarter of the present population. And that figure rises to 40% when you look at young people in custody, your sympathy for defunding the police will almost certainly rest on your relationship with them. For most of the country, who are unlikely to be disproportionately stopped by the police or arrested, there is significant support for more bobbies on the beat. Even with communities with a more adversarial relationship with the police, support for defunding them is far from universal. But the idea of defunding the police is not just about tackling racism, although that's obviously a big part of it but it's also creating a system that helps and supports everyone in a better way. Because increasingly, the police are getting involved in complicated social issues and mental health issues too, which might be better dealt with by other people. While many support services have had their funding cut, it's often been the police who have stepped in, sometimes not as well trained at dealing with sensitive personal situations. For instance, these figures show the number of police incidents that were flagged as being related to mental health, rising to nearly half a million in 2018 alone. So, many people calling to defund the police are actually calling for radical reforms to redress the balance, rather than mass defunding or abolition as others have demanded. Defunding the police isn't about getting rid of the police tomorrow and closing every prison the next day. No one is arguing for that. And we understand we don't have the kind of social or economic environment that makes that viable. What it does argue for is that we can reduce levels of harm and violence within our society if we improve levels of social housing available to people, if we make more secure and better paid jobs, if we make education and training more accessible to lower income people, if we improve social care and health care and mental health provision, if we refund our youth services to make sure the most vulnerable young people have access to the kind of support and guidance they need. But what would be the impact of actually going ahead with this and defunding the police? Well, the truth is, we just don't know. And obviously it would depend on how you do it, how radical you go, how radical you want to go. What we do know is that here in the UK, when the number of police fell over the last decade, the overall amount of crime also fell as well, continuing a trend that's pretty much been going on since the 90s. And we can also look at examples around the world. Although there isn't a model for uh, defunding the police, if we just look across the world, the safest and least violent societies aren't the countries with the biggest prison systems or the most violent or powerful police forces. They're the countries with the highest levels of uh, equality. They're the countries with the most heavy, heavy investments in social and health services or education. 
And while we can look at the United States, where we often adopt a lot of our criminal justice policies and practices, they're the country that has the largest prison population. The government told us they were delivering the people's priorities by giving the police what they say is the biggest funding increase in a decade. They want to support police forces in recruiting 20,000 more officers over the next three years. And the government says they'll make sure the police have all the funding, powers and resources necessary in order to carry on protecting communities. For those demanding the funding, this is less about abolition and more about remaking their relationship with the state. It's about asking who are these institutions really for? What inequalities do they enhance? And is there a better way to arrange them?